Yesterday, North Dakota looked more like a war zone than the site of a protest over the construction of a pipeline. There were many protesters, uh, many uh, arrayed against the protesters. Authorities estimated at least 250 protesters who are mostly Native Americans, although Americans have traveled from across the entirety of the country uh, to stand with them, uh, were at the camp during Thursday's violence. Activists say more than 300 officers moved in with all-terrain vehicles, armored cars, and military-grade Humvees, helicopters, and at least one airplane monitoring the action uh, from above. Uh, we have rumors of tasers, of beanbag guns, sound cannons, and other forms of, uh, in some cases, uh, non-lethal uh, force that were deployed against uh, the protesters. But there are many reports of live ammunition being present, although not necessarily used against protesters in this well, case. Well, not, not, no, not necessarily, right? Not used. We not used. There, there, was, there are reports of shots being fired, which really return to the police are all saying that those were from protesters. We have some video. Why don't we actually roll this as we're talking about it? Um, you're going to see a bit of the situation uh, on the ground there. Uh, and the photos uh, of the, the, the police officers with their mine-resistant uh, vehicles, which I think are amazing, that in another case in America those are being deployed, standing off against, in some cases, individuals who are there holding up bottles of water is one of those iconic photos that Look only protests in America. Look at the danger those, those law enforcement officers are facing there. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Hundreds of law enforcement Mine resistant? Uh, one yes. side... Mine resistant ambush proof vehicles. One side is actually rats. digging up the earth and could put things in it. The other side isn't. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, we know uh, that 141 were arrested over the course of the last 24 hours. Uh, what happened a little bit earlier in this week is that there had been negotiations going on between uh, authorities and the protesters. Those broke down, and that led to the protesters making their camp on the physical path of the proposed pipeline for the first time. They had not previously done that. They'd always been close to it, but not on it. And that is what led to uh, an incredible amount of force being uh, brought in against them. Now, as, as we mentioned, there were reports from the police that shots had been fired. Supposedly, a woman drew a handgun and fired three shots at a sheriff's deputy, narrowly missing him. Uh, we do have this photo, which we're going to bring up, which people are saying is the actual woman holding a prayer stick, not a gun. Of course, many reports coming from both sides. I haven't seen any hard evidence that any revolver was deployed against the police, but that is what I they're mean, saying. It's just, it just the history of these things. We've seen is, this. Is that she didn't have a gun. Like, is that I she don't, didn't obviously, have none of us were there. We don't know. It seems really unlikely that in an incredibly organized protest, one person thought, I'm going to bring a handgun and fire at this incredibly At hundreds armed. of police officers. Yeah. And, and I'm going with to be, snipers. And I'm going to be a middle-aged elderly woman. I couldn't quite see yeah. it well enough. And I'm going to have a prayer stick with me, but I'm going to shoot, 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 <laughs> and then put it back in and get my prayer stick. That is not usually how it goes down. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, look, and, and before, these are the same cops who were saying, oh, well, there might be pipe bombs. We heard reports of pipe bombs. Really? Yeah. Might be pipe bombs. If you found pipe bombs, believe me, you made it, you would have made a literally a federal case out yes. of it. James There's no Co pipe bombs. James Comey would write a letter saying there might be there might be. We're checking. I'm <laughs> checking. Looking to see the pipe bombs. I heard there might be uh, pipe bombs. Get back to you in a couple now, of weeks. <laughs> there are two additional uh, angles on this that are extremely interesting that that Jared Jackson uh, brought to my attention. Uh, first of all, it's uh, the the diverse sources of the police and the other forces uh, that were waiting for the protesters. And so the Morton County's uh, Sheriff's Department said in a press statement uh, earlier this week that. Due to escalated unlawful tactics by individuals protesting the construction of the Dakota Access Pipeline, Morton County has requested additional law enforcement assistance from other states. The state of North Dakota made an emergency management assistance compact, that's the EMAC request to states for assistance on October 7th. You're seeing there a number of different states that they've made that request for. So what is this EMAC? Because I had previously never seen that before. The EMAC program is supposed to be used to allow states to send personnel, equipment, and commodities to help disaster relief efforts yeah, probably in other states. Emergency management is probably it's what those yeah. are. Emergency management for yeah. tornadoes, for earthquakes, perhaps a super volcano someday in that part of the world. Not necessarily for a couple of uh, hundred water protectors, and yet that's what was used, and they have they have had those uh, those forces come in from a number of different states in the region. Emergency management Army Corps, is yeah. what I'm guessing. And, uh, and apparently uh, coordinating, there's evidence that they've been coordinating with the corporations themselves, not just the uh, the police in North Dakota. So let me clarify two of those things. So EMAC has, was also apparently brought in in situations like Ferguson. 
So it, it is apparently is emergency management not against uh, natural disasters, but against uh, natural minorities. So if you've got uh, you know African Americans protesting, well, let's send in those emergency forces. Hey, all the states gather together. Let's go crush those guys. Oh, you've got Native Americans over there in Standing Rock. Hey, all the states. Oh yeah, it's supposed to be for you know natural disaster. Who cares? Listen, who cares? Come on, we got some Native Americans to to go get. Now on the issue of no, by the way, so you can argue with my speculation on their thinking. You cannot argue with where they sent them. They did send them for those things, and that's not where they're supposed to go. That's not the purpose that they are yeah. by law supposed to act. Yes. Well, can, okay? I, can I just throw in? Because I just looked at their website. It's super mm -hmm. easy to find. It's emergency. Uh, it's emergency management uh, assistance. Uh, Damn. Compact. Compact. So and, Army car was wrong. And like. Uh, oh, yeah. For I example, their press release is that <laughs> as Hurricane Matthew continues its destructive path along the Florida coast, there are states as far away as California deploying resources to assist Florida. Yeah. Fourteen states are helping when they wrote this and said it's growing by the hour. That's that's yeah. exactly what it's no, but that's for. Exactly what's and all happening. 50 because of the all fear, 50 states are in it. Because of the fear of Hurricane Matthew, forces are being deployed to North Dakota. <laughs> right. so, um, so now the second thing I need to clarify is, are the cops working with uh, the companies? So are they being one-sided here? Well, the company itself told us that. Now I'm going to give you a quote from Raw Story here. Energy transfer, which quotes the company. So first, uh, the description. Energy transfer, transfer Partners, the parent company of the Dakota Access LLC, said Tuesday that it intends to work with police to forcibly clear a front lines water protectors camp. Energy Transfer Partners threatened that quote, this is their quote, in coordination with local law enforcement and county and state officials, all trespassers will be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law and removed from the land. So the cops aren't going and saying, okay, hey, Army Corps of Engineers, I know that you put an injunction on the company to not build around uh, the Missouri River. And hey, lawyers, I know that there is a question about eminent domain and there's a question about this treaty from 1851. Mm -hmm. And hey, protesters who live here, who live here, let me consult with you guys. Let me also consult with the company and yeah. let me make decisions based on the law and the circumstances. No, by the admission of the, the company, and by the way, the cops constantly talking about, hey, we've been talking to the, uh, to the company. It's, it says they're like the Pinkertons. Like, yes, absolutely. Yeah, that's, that's we, what I thought and they was. admit it. Yeah, we check with the company. Now we will come and crush you. I, your claims and are interesting. <laughs> well, like, to me, you would know that the cops are unbiased if they lined up on both sides. If they said, okay, hey, company. And they fought each other. Hey, no, company, uh, you're not allowed to build in certain areas. We're going to make sure you don't build there, okay? Because that's the federal government told us that you're not allowed to build there. And protesters, you're on private land, so I'm lining up uh, to you know to make sure you're not in the wrong place. But no, the assumption is citizens, <laughs> citizens. No, this giant company already gave me my marching orders, and I will bring what <laughs> things that look like tanks. Pretend that you have like snipers, snipers and my, you know, Air, planted mines, and, and then you got pipe they got bombs. Sonic cannons. So that's why with the cops. You, in this particular case, you shouldn't be surprised that we're skeptical of you. It's because of your actions, your clear, obvious one-sidedness. You know, and when are you ever going to protect and serve the citizens? When does know, that happen? Because like, we're going to turn in just a little bit to the the militia in in Oregon and the the acquittal of them. Um, I, I don't remember within 48 hours of them taking over the land, 300 police officers and mine-resistant vehicles sweeping in with dogs and cannons and beanbags. Right. Where they were the were tanks cautious. against the Bundys? And by the way, those guys, it was not speculation, it was not a, maybe a prayer stick. No, they had heavy weaponry, they showed it on video and threatened to murder the show. cops that came, but the cops didn't come for 41 days, let they, they let them take over federal buildings. They only caught them when they left the, that yeah. area. Wait, weren't those guys white? <laughs> oh, good point. Good point. Yes. Also, okay. but you know what's significant? No, uh, I knew real I was real right quick, about. but also significant is that those guys had guns. Yeah, and therefore that's true it costs, too, yeah. So I mean, now you you know I don't want them to, but the Standing Rock sues. I, they wouldn't have come as quickly if they'd had guns because they would have had to. Mm. You know, you know it, but it, I, but I don't want them to have guns. I know, and th this happens in, with our insane foreign policy as well. So when we invaded Iraq. There was a, 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 some good chance that we, and I'm putting it so lightly, 
that we knew that they had already disarmed and had no weapons of mass destruction. And one theory is that's why we attacked them, not because they had weapons of mass destruction, but because they didn't. Exactly. Which then provides a perverse incentive for the North Koreas of the world to say, well, I better go get nukes right away, otherwise America comes and gets everybody who doesn't have weapons of mass destruction. Yeah. So in this case, as Ben pointed out, for whoever protesters are or whatever race, if you say, hey, the Bundy guys get to put a gun to the cops' heads, and because of that we don't bother them, right? Okay, what is this message you just send out to everybody? Go grab all your guns and point it at the cops. That's a terrible message. You know, I get to terrible message. I get to feel moderately good here because I remember consistently praising the cops during the Bundy thing. Like, I got it. I, I'm against the Bundys, but I don't want anybody shot. And if you have to wait 41 days or 82 days, you wait it out. You wait. You wait as long as reasonably can to minimize bloodshed. You don't wait forever, but you wait and you do it right. There's a but but here. When there is yeah. no threat, except for the dangerous prayer stick, they got to mobilize and now, go. I, I want to talk about very quickly one other threat there, because obviously the whole point of all of these protests, I mean, there's a couple of different uh, problems that the, 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 the tribes and their supporters have, uh, one of which is the possible destruction of newly found sacred ground. But the most important is the possible threat to the water sources of that area, that the fact that the pipeline is going to travel directly under Lake Oahe. And they're concerned that if there's leaks, that that could contaminate their sole source of water. Now, many people have made them out to be fear mongers over that, but newly released information makes their case seem a little bit more understandable. Uh, North Dakota recorded nearly 300 oil pipeline spills in less than two years. Newly released state do uh, documents show none was reported to the public at the time. According to records obtained by the Associated Press, the pipeline spills, many of them small, are among some 750 oil field incidents that have occurred since January of 2012 without public notification. Now, some of those are small in that 20 or 30 barrels of oil were spilled. Some of them were small in that 20,000 barrels of oil were spilled. And almost universally, the one that was reported was when an oil truck collided with something. But in the cases where the actual pipelines leaked, almost universally, 749 out of 750 were never reported to the public. And so if they leaked, leaked into Lake Oahe, if they contaminated a portion of the water, would the people in the region even know until they had drunk the contaminated water? We have reason to believe that they would not. And, and I would add what is even worse about that is that, now this is not a, a, a liberal organization reporting this, this is uh, the Associated Press, the most respected uh, news gathering organization in the world. So th they're out there and they ask state officials, have there been oil spills? Bless their hearts, we're doing real investigation, okay, and maybe there were no oil spills. The Associated Press does not prejudge that, right? And the state wouldn't give an answer. AP's like, wait a minute, what's going on here? There's no oil spills or you don't know that there's oil spills? For 11 days, state and company officials would not give an answer. Finally, after all the Associated Press pressing on it, they said, okay, fine, it was 300 oil spills and 750 oil spill incidents. Okay? In four years. In, in four so years and like 300 almost 100 years. a year. And, and then the Department of Mineral, Mineral Resources in, in uh, North Dakota, that's the state's top oil regulator, uh, said the regulators worry about, quote, over-reporting spills. Now, why <laughs> would a regulator worry about over-reporting spills that actually happen? That's because, yes, it is so obvious that the government here is working hand in hand with the private corporations who are running these projects. It's glaringly obvious when they go, no, I don't want to report what the private corporation did. If you're the state, why wouldn't you report it? Well, they're saying they don't <laughs> want to report little incidents, right? Isn't that what the word, or little, uh, little, oh, I think there was little incidents. But that, that's what people want to hear about, right? Yeah. The, the, and, the, the, well, the and, and minor, the, maybe it was minor incidents, the minor occasions yeah. of oil spills. So, that so adds up. Little incidents. So let's say, uh, for conservatives watching this, let's do an analogy. Imagine if Lake Oahe was a bowl of Skittles. <laughs> and three of the Skittles were oil. <laughs> Would you drink out of that bowl of Skittles? <laughs> the analogy falls apart, but you understand what I'm going for. Yeah, and, and so <laughs> some of them, by the way, were not little. No, they're protecting the companies and not protecting the citizens. That's at the heart of the problem here. So finally, I just want you to be super clear on the two main issues here that, uh, that the folks at Standing Rock are fighting for, okay? So one is to protect the water, and it turns out, and I, <laughs> I, I didn't know the degree to which it spilled. I didn't, we didn't know it until today. 
So thank you, Associated Press, for doing journalism, yeah. right? So it turns out eh, it spills a lot, and if it spills into the river, and that's your drinking water, well, even a little spill is deeply problematic. A large spill mm -hmm. is disastrous. So it turns out they were right to be concerned about the water. And by the way, that water doesn't just serve their reservation. There's only 8,000 people on their reservation. No, that, that's the Missouri River. It serves a lot of people. In fact, the government knows it. The pipeline was originally supposed to go near Bismarck, North Dakota. But the state said, no, spills there would endanger a larger uh, group of people in Bismarck, and we don't want Bismarck to be endangered. So you know there is a danger. You know there is a danger. Yeah. Uh, send it by the reservation, but the Missouri River goes everywhere. Yeah. It, it doesn't just stay there. How many Put it more under people something live in Bismarck than the reservation. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so one, it, it appears that they were more correct there than they were originally given credit for. Okay, number two. They say that the Fort Laramie Tr Treaty of 1851 did not cede that territory, so it might still be tribal land. And are you going to tell me that no, America wouldn't have cheated Native Americans on a treaty back in 1851? That's inconceivable. If you say that, you don't know anything about history, and you're purposely being blind to it. So I know it's frustrating that it takes a while for the judicial system to work. And they, and and by the way, there's I think one of the rulings there was unconscionable as well. But we've got to figure out: is are they right? Are you telling me Native Americans didn't get screwed over on treaties? Like it is not conceivable? No, of course it's conceivable. I'm not saying they did. We have to adjudicate it. We have to have due process to see whose land it really is. Okay, and we have to have due process on the injunction that the government put on building around the the uh, Missouri River. So you can't just have these guys literally bulldoze everyone, and the government and the state and the cops work with them and work against the citizens. That is not the way you're supposed to do it. And, and look, the, and the Sioux there and, and a lot of Native Americans across the country are, are also concerned about the last piece of this puzzle, which is the, our court system. So they say, oh, no, no, a, a district judge ruled. Now, on, not on the merits of the case, that's going to take a while, but on an injunction. The, what the tribes there said is, Hey, don't build a pipeline until you know that that's really your land, and that you know, and then, and, and according to the law, federal law, you have to actually consult with the tribes nearby, even if it's not their land. If they're nearby, and here there is no question that they are nearby, according to treaties that the U.S. has signed, that that is inarguable. And the judge in this case, the U.S. District Judge, said two things: one of which is defensible, and the other one I don't think is. He says the Army Corps gave the tribes a reasonable opportunity to respond. I don't know if that's true. I, I don't have the facts on that. I wasn't in the case. So maybe they did, maybe they didn't. Okay, we'll find out in the longer trial, right? The second thing is, he says the tribe has, quote, not shown it will suffer injury that would be prevented by an injunction that the court could issue. Now, what, if you lift the injunction and they build a pipeline, the case of the tribes are you're building it over bur burial grounds and it's our property. Because and of it might, and it might affect our water, and it might mm -hmm. affect our. What do you mean the injunction doesn't affect what's? Of course it does. That's you, the whole point so of the could, injunction. So in three years we could win when the pipeline's already there and already yeah, spilled and already destroyed our burial property, mm -hmm. and it turns out yeah, it's our you, land. Then you remove the pipeline and you put back the sacred, <laughs> irreplaceable sites. Yeah. <laughs> so no, I mean, look. Even if you're skeptical <laughs> about the justice system, and I can see after this ruling why they would be. At a minimum, you have got to, and I say this to the district judge, you've got to let that play out. You can't decide, before you decide the merits of the case, you can't decide the actual action that's going to happen. Oh yeah, go ahead and build a pipeline, who cares, build it, and then later, I guess I'll figure out if you were right to build it. No, yeah. that is not justice. You know who makes independent media possible? You guys. Because of you, we can actually do this show free of any outside influence. That's what makes us so strong. Become a member today, tytnetwork.com slash join. You are the media.